Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's June the 22nd, 2023. Uh, topics on the agenda, blog posts, Google Summer of Code. Um, that one can be deleted. Change log for 20.401.2. Uh, pull request from Jeffrey Chen that we should talk to more. Uh, Update CLI for Jenkins documentation. Do you want that one on the list, Bruno? If you don't mind, just a few minutes. Great. Discussion and review of Java 11 to Java 17 changes in the documentation. This one, I think I would delay one week until Kevin's available. Mm -hmm. And then DevOps World Tour. That one, I'm going to just drop from the list for now because I don't think there's much we've got to say here. No. And releasing a plugin, this is one I'd proposed that Bruno and I have been collaborating on a particular plugin. Maybe it's worth us doing a session here where we do a release of the plugin, show the steps that are required and why. Anything else that we need on the agenda? I don't think so. Okay, so let's talk to, why don't you give us the highlights of the Jew, the May newsletter? Hmm. Uh, I don't know if I remember correctly, all that was addressed, but of course there is a big part about uh, infra platform documentation, um, everything like, uh, but I just don't remember the highlights. Maybe just have a look at the key takeaways. Um, what was that? So yes, plugins updates to fix uh, security vulnerabilities on May the 16th. Uh, GDK 8 finally uh, has been dropped in favor of GDK 11 um, for the running Jenkins agent. At least it's been, what, a year or so? Yeah, cool. Right. And SSH agent has uh, released uh, 5.00 now in at 5.5.0. Uh, and there has been some breaking changes related to the old pine version, I guess. So if you're using that, you'd better have a look at the documentation at the change log. Okay. Anything else, Mark? Because I just don't remember. Those were the things that I, I think those are fine. The rest are covered. We've got the the governance topic had some things in terms of prototype JS being removed and oh, HTML3. HTML unit three and Guava 32. And we continue, let's see, on UI UX prototype and accessibility. And those are cool things. And then end of life is coming for, for some operating systems. And this is warning users about it. And on we go. Yes, uh, major subject, I may say, you know, prototype.js removal is pretty a big thing. And of course, the uh, deprecated operating system is also another big thing. So big changes are happening right now in Jenkins. That's cool. Thanks a lot, Mark. Okay. So removing deprecated plugins with Docker. So this is a new blog post from you, Bruno. And so, so tell us about the, the challenges hiding here and what you learned from it, etc. You know, intuition is not always helping. Uh, I thought I knew how to get rid of deprecated plugin just by following what was in the UI and I was wrong, plenty wrong. So I took some time and wrote um, a too long didn't read a section so that people who are in a hurry have the correct, at least I guess, I hope, a way of getting rid of deprecated plugins when using Docker. And then I detail a, the intuitive way, at least my intuitive way of trying to get rid of Docker plugins and why it fails. So if you are courageous enough to read that up to the end, you'll see that the progress makes sense until the end when you see it's not <laughs> right. It just doesn't work. And I explain, I try to explain why it doesn't work. It's just because you are uh, trying to work against the flow like a salmon, uh, you know, in the river and why you should begin to remove everything from the Docker context, first of all, and then work with the UI. That was quite a lot of fun to, to write an experiment. And now I feel just a little less dumb uh, about plugins in Jenkins. I hope it will uh, help somebody and I hope it will work outside of my machine. <laughs> we'll see. Interesting. Thank you. Okay. So so what you did, so the in your too long do not read, so in your summary, 
the message was, okay, build the container image that does not include your deprecated plugins. Yeah, then sure. start it. But with this force recreate. Yeah, I should maybe have explained this one. Uh, because I think it gets rid, let me know if I'm wrong, but I think it gets rid of all the volumes uh, in use or something like that. Or hmm, I just can't remember why. Oh, I don't think I should retry and maybe make another <laughs> article about that one. Do you have any hint about why? I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not nearly as fluent in Docker Compose as I should be. So oh. I, I would have to do go exploring. I am uh, sincerely apologize, but I don't know. So I it, don't know either. I should know because I wrote the article, but I don't know. I can't remember why. Sorry. Okay. Well, so it's worth it's worth investigating. And but the steps that you've described here worked for you. And so yeah. others can use those same steps. Hopefully. Great. Okay. And in this case, what you were doing was your example was you were removing one of the deprecated plugins? Uh, yes, there was popper.js, uh, which was needed by Bootstrap 4 API. And that's the one I wanted to get rid of, first of all. OK, good. I like this because that, that force recreate may be the crucial thing for me to learn more about Docker Compose. Thanks. Any any other highlights that you want to note on this particular blog post? Oh, no, no, thank you. Um, I hope it's readable. OK, great. All right, then on Google Summer of Code, so Vandit Singh's preview site is available now that shows this is one way that you, Jenkins documentation might look when hosted under Antora. Looking, here's the version number choice. Here are the version number choices and different components that can be selected at those different version numbers. So this is this is just a prototype, but the prototype is, at least for me, quite interesting. It is. So he's got the concept of user documentation and it's versioned, and then separately versioned the developer documentation and tutorials seem to use the same version. I'm not sure tutorials are as fluid right now, given where how it moved around, mm -hmm. but it looks it looks promising. Indeed. Cool. Okay. And Ashutosh's work on Docker Compose. This is direct impact on documentation. Anything you want to share thou there, Bruno? Uh, we're progressing on the automation of all the things because there were also uh, there was still some things that had to be entered by hand, you know, and that was not really beautiful. It's not the goal. The goal is to um, simplify as much as we can the existing documentation about Docker by providing examples that work out of the box. And it was not really the case, but now uh, from this week on, we have a working example fully automated, just one shell file to launch and you're good to go. And hopefully we will have other more meaningful examples in the weeks to come. We'll see. But for the time being, it has proved um, working on Linux, WSL2, uh, macOS, and Gitpod. Woohoo! Ah, ah, okay. So WSL, you said Linux, WSL, Gitpod. What was the other one that I Mac missed? OS. Mac OS. Oh, and Mac OS. Okay. And is there a place where I could go to see this or where others could go to see it? Yes, of course. It's a work in progress, but I will give you the link of the repo. Uh, there we go. Can I put that in the chat? Uh, yes. Okay, so here it is. And I'm just going to paste that URL into the notes. Great. Okay, so I could go grab from that if I feel like working something with Docker Compose and experiment with it. Yep, for sure. Very good, excellent. Okay, good. Then the other two Google Summer of Code projects really don't have documentation impact, so I'm just gonna take that note out. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? Um, no, thank you. Okay, so. 2.401.2 changelog 
Kevin noted in his preparation of the notes that it's been prepared and merged. And it, I think it was quite simple. It's got just the one item that says, hey, we'll warn administrators when their Linux operating system is approaching mm -hmm. end of life. And next week, Chris Stern is the release lead. And thanks in advance to Chris for his efforts on that. Great. Anything else on 2.401.2? No, Mark. It sounds promising. You will see. Should okay. One. Next one then is Jeffrey Chen. We had we had two a week or two ago been looking at this pull request 6409 from Jeffrey. I got working on it over the weekend and found that it just wasn't working for me. So I split it into two. Oh, that I, I couldn't push back to his repos his branch. And so yeah. I, I split. And the split went to this one, convert the administering page, and to this one, which is add a best practices page. And I've, I think let's take a look to see if they've got feedback on either of them that say we need to block this thing. Okay, so Kevin's given his. So it looks like we don't have approval yet, but the changes have have died down. So it's time for me to go do another visit of this one. That's a lot of work, but uh, that would be a good thing when it will be finally merged in the right place. You think, documentation yeah. Work. So well, so let's and let's make a note: replacement pull requests. PR dash, okay, 6477, okay. And I think the next one was probably 78. Six, four, seven, eight. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. So six, four, seven, eight. Ah, <laughs> down. <laughs> Almost Fine, there. Fine, whatever. Okay, copy link. Okay. All right. So, and what these are is. This one was administering, and this one was pipeline best practices. Mm -hmm. And part of me is worried that pipeline best practices is a bold statement, so I want more reviews on it. This one, I'm less worried about the, the technical accuracy because I'm reasonably experienced in this one it's just talking about the jenkins home directory mm -hmm. and copy rename and move projects which is functionality jenkins has had for a very long time but has never documented that fact so this one this one i think given actually since we're here why not let's just call it Kevin's feedback is resolved. I'm going to go ahead and just squash merge it. After we get the build successful. Okay. Ready to merge. This pipeline best practices needs more text. I inserted some placeholder text that said, put more text here, but I haven't done the insertion of that text yet. All right. Anything else on that topic? No, Mark. Thank you. Okay. So next item then was a draft pull request on update CLI. I assume, Bruno, it's still draft? Oh, yes, indeed. It doesn't work yet. 
Uh, the thing is, I'm trying to replace all the references to Docker images and plugin versions in the documentation. And I have done things wrong, you know, I've just been discovering a bit for a few weeks now and I'm doing newcomers um, errors, of course. Uh, so I had a refactor recently and I stumbled onto um, limitations or bugs within update CLI. <laughs> so I submitted two issues, I think yesterday to update CLI. And one of them has already been sold, and I hope to see a new release of Update CLI soon so that I can get something better. And I also asked for some new features on Update CLI to get um, things faster. For example, you know, uh, it works with sources, then conditions, then uh, targets. And for some reasons, I need at the same time Ruby and Alpine. Python and Alpine to compose a tag with the version of Ruby and the version of Alpine, for example. And I do that for several files, and it's a waste of time because I need Alpine in most of the files. So I'd like a bit shall I, to, to do something you know, with the sources and keep them up to date for all files that it will process, for example. But yes, it's still progressing, and for some of uh, the documentation, um, the committee removed the pinned versions in the documentation for very valid reasons, uh, but I put them back. Oh, <laughs> good. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm afraid I did that after you, uh, Mark. I'm sorry. It's just a proposal. You always can say no. No, uh, no, no. That's well. What you did, the adding the pin versions is much, much better behavior. I was just too lazy to update them. So good for you that I wasn't willing to update them. Update CLI would update automate the updates. Yes, but no, you were not lazy. It does just it's a pain in the neck to do. Okay, uh, yes, that. I was I was unwilling to do the work necessary to update yeah. them interactively. I felt your pain when reading your PRs. <laughs> How can you do such boring work? Right. Well, I have to do something about that. Anyway, and it doesn't work for the time being just because uh, the pinned versions are not in the master branch. You know, they've been removed, so my update CLI um, check doesn't work. But that's not a mandatory step, so whenever we'll merge it, that should be fine. But it's not ready yet. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm still waiting for a new versions of uh, update CLI to get it to work perfectly. Well, and I think that's a, a great thing, right, to be able to use tooling to automate this and tooling we already use elsewhere to do automation. Great. Yes, I went even too far. For example, I started to modify a blog post from 2017. Uh, no, this makes no sense. Let them like they are. It's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Anything All else? Anything else on your use of update CLI? No, thank you, Mark. Okay. So next topic was Java 11 to Java 17 upgrade changes. This one, let's link to the pull request because Kevin has created a draft pull request that we can, we can reference. And the draft pull request has already a few notes in it in terms of what, what we have to do. Yeah, here's the draft pull request but it's there's an awful lot yet to do and there are some complications hiding in there draft pull request so for example if i remember right when i started on it i i saw things in all sorts of places related to java 17 and likewise kevin did Maybe there is even another link where we had a checklist. I don't see it here. Oh, this one. In the issue, there is a, rep a description of checklist items that Kevin and I identified initially. These are the things we knew needed to be changed, but then there are many more that need it as well. So let's let's open them just to give ourselves a hint. Okay, so this one, Jenkins running Jenkins on Java 11 in Docker. We probably want to just replace that with running Jenkins on in Docker, because 
we'll, we'll, we'd prefer they use Java 17 and we'll tell them to use Java yeah. 17. Those kind of things. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else on Java 11 to Java 17? No, thank you. Okay. Next topic was releasing a plugin. All right. So Bruno and I have are have been contributing to oh dear bruno which plugin was it it was oh http request right i think so yes okay so let's go to the http request plugin and here what we see is that we had a pull request from christoph bexer christoph obexer obexer yeah. right proposing a new feature and bruno and i reviewed it it looked good. It's got documentation. It's been merged. And with that merge, we now see in the release drafter Whoa. quite a number <laughs> of things that have been have been collected since August of 2022 when when this the last release was done of this plugin. It's got lots of component updates right the upgrade to html unit 3 mm. it removes some old junk from jelly files it improves a number of things in documentation fixes one bug let's look at that bug just to be sure okay and then it has three new features one of which is require java 11 and jenkins 2.361.4 it's it's a reasonably significant yeah, release so our idea is here marked. is let's do this release today and nothing is marked as breaking change right even if somehow there must be some hiding <laughs> we'll, well we we hope not but All right, so Java minus version. So what I was going to do, let's make the text bigger. Yeah. Because bigger text is easier to read. Is that easy enough? Oh, yes. Even without the glasses. Very good. Okay. All right. So the release process that we want to use, and it's documented here. Let's go to the Jenkins documentation. Releasing a plugin. Mm -hmm. plugin Before release plugin tips release. up performing a plugin release manually because this is the one we're going to do manually all right so it talks about how to configure and i've already configured myself and now it says this is how we perform the release maven so i check to be sure that i can push yeah which i know i can and then Maven release, prepare, and release, perform. So that's the step we want to do. Now, before I run that, I like to know that I'm running the right version. Mm -hmm. And so I'm running Java 11 and latest Maven 3.9.2. And I like to clean my repository. A stupid question, Mark, but I, I haven't seen that in the documentation. Isn't written somewhere that we have to use Java 11 and Maven 392? Uh, it's not because the version of Java that someone chooses depends on their on their preferences. Of course. So us okay. mandating, you need to use. Well, it depends on the on the plugin itself. This plugin, because it now requires Java, Java 11. 11. Hmm would have to be released with at least Java 11. I could do the release with Java 17 and it would generate Java 11 bytecode. But oh. I'm a conservative and I like to generate releases with the same Java version that I've been testing with. Of course. So this is... We're, there is the change from Christoph. Mm -hmm. And there are the other changes that happened. And as we look further down, we'll see the last release was here. Yep. So now it's time for us to try a release. Mm. And that is, well, let's go copy the text. Copy, paste. 
So it's offering the, it's asking mm. me the question interactively, what version do I want to release? And I'm going to open up my page that was telling me what version, this is the page we were looking at. Wanted. The yeah. draft is 1.17. So that's the right version. This is generated by release drafter automatically. So because release drafter is configured, we'll use 1.17 and yeah, that tag. Now let's check. Sorry, Mark, to interrupt. Uh, that's because it um, guessed that there was nothing major that would have necessitated uh, a bigger, you know, not a major update or whatever. It's just a new version. Yeah, it, to be to be precise, what it does is it reads the POM file that has this number in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's that's great. We're going to say the next version will be 1.18 snapshot. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to start the build. And this will run all the tests. And once the tests have passed, it will then publish the build. It actually runs the build in two steps. It runs, that's what release colon prepare was that prompting phase. And okay. then it runs this set of tests. And then I believe release colon perform we'll do another build without running tests and then we'll push the, the changes to the central repository to repo.jenkinsci.org. Okay, so there may be a build with um, a debug uh, information and maybe something without debug yeah, for the I, release? I don't think that's what they do, but I'm not sure. And again, I don't know the details of Maven release process. It's good enough for me that this process works. Now, while it's running, <laughs> let's go look at, at the instructions. Okay, some of the things that might fail, we could get a failure to upload, mm -hmm. right? And that might have been might happen in this case we may see that because i requested permission to perform that upload a few hours ago but if we were too fast it might be that the permissions have actually not been granted yet so if we look at at that pull request let's go look at the pull request i submitted to repository permissions updater this is where i submitted a request please let me become a maintainer of the HTTP request plugin. And so here was my request. And we see that Tim merged it three hours ago. Three hours ago. And our hope is that three hours is enough that all of the permission changes that this repository permissions updater applies have been applied throughout the whole system. Okay. Uh, that's funny. I thought you were already a maintainer for this plugin, but well, the official adopter there's no there's a difference and, and that's that's an interesting one right because you and i both have permissions on the github repository yep and we have those permissions however some months ago i had revoked our release permissions oh, yeah. by submitting this pull request that says hey stop these people from releasing plugins it didn't revoke our GitHub permissions. All it did was revoke our permissions to release. So we were still allowed to contribute to the plugin, still allowed to merge pull requests, help it along. But what we couldn't do was deliver a new release. Okay, which was very reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so this, basic, what this pull request that's on screen now is doing is it's reverting a small part of this pull request. Yeah. And and then. I may still go back eventually and say, I'm not really ready to stay <laughs> on as a, an HTTP request yes. maintainer, but this particular, this particular release feels like it's a worthwhile release, right? Upgrade to Java 11, um, add a new method, add credential, credential tracking, which I like a lot because it helps me know which jobs are using a particular credential. So, so we hope that this is all positive for its consumers. Yeah. And now let's see how the build's going. Ah, it's finished. Ooh. Okay. So what we see here is uploaded to repo to Maven Jenkinsci.org to this location. And so here is the data. Here is the plugin. And if I open that page in my web browser, we can actually go look at it and see. Now, really, people shouldn't bother browsing the artifact repository like this, but there it is. That's exciting. Now, well, no. yeah, now the release itself 
won't appear. It takes uh, from minutes to as much as an hour or two for it to become visible in the Jenkins Update Center. So if we go to updates.jenkins.io, here we can see there's a link that says latest releases of Jenkins War and all plugins. So let's open that page. And now here, if we go to HTTP request, requests. And now I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat. If I click this, it will download it for me, but I don't yeah. want to download it. I want, I want the, link the link because I'm yeah. going to use it to query the mirrors. Uh -huh. So if I do this and do a question mark mirror list, this will ask Update Center to give me the list of mirrors and the version. So right now, the version is still 1.16. And we can see that it's it's available on eight different mirrors. But what we released was 1.17. So yep. while we're waiting for the mirrors to get it, we need to go publish the change log. And that's a that's that's a manual step for this thing because this thing hasn't been configured. Oh, you so well, that was my next question, in fact. Should it oh. appear all by itself automatically within GitHub? And the answer is it won't. So what did appear automatically was not the tag 1.17 has appeared here. That's good, right? That's the tag that was created by Maven release prepare and release perform. And this is letting me use that page that already existed. And now I'm going to go ahead and publish it as the release. So the release is now published and now other users can see that release on the GitHub page and plugins.jenkins.io over the course of the next four to eight hours will detect this release as well and will insert the documentation from this release onto its page. So if we go to plugins.jenkins.io for right now, we will see that it's still showing 1.16 So here, mm -hmm. 1.16 is the most recent, and in a in and it's usually four to six hours, maybe as much as eight. 1.17 will become visible there. Well, that's cool. And that concludes the demonstration. Oh, I've got that one more brilliant. step to do. Yeah, Let's thanks see. a lot for sharing that with me. I'm pretty happy to have witnessed that live. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That's all for today for Doc's Office Hours. Recording will be available in about 24 hours. Thanks.